Hey y'all, this is 41119 with Head Frame Hunters. Gonna do something kind of different here. Uh, giving y'all a vid guided video tour of the limestone crushing plant that I worked at in Northern Kentucky. So we were crushing dolomite here. and uh, You can see that's a Komatsu HD 605-7 or-8 rigid haul truck coming up to the jaw. The uh, bed starts to rise just as soon as he hits the backstop. So I think the dump light, which is our indicator, was on as soon as it came up to the jaw. So we try and keep the, the trucks spaced out evenly so we had a, to maintain a, a constant flow of rock through the crusher and the whole primary side of the plant. So the primary side was run separately from the secondary or finished side. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Depending on conditions underground, the uh, spacing could expand or compress you know, if you had a, if they were changing headers and had to train the loader all the way across the mine, or something like that. So usually in a day we do about seven to eight thousand tons. When I was there, you know, it could be half that. If we had a lot of breakdowns, we could hit a nine or approach ten thousand. If we had a real good day with minimal downtime, minimal black belt, they had a, the blasting crew had enough enough rock on the ground underground. So there was kind of a, a timing balance. You see the, the truck here was waiting a bit to dump. Uh, timing balance to make sure that you weren't dumping rock on bare metal and wearing out the liners faster and also that you weren't gonna dump into a full hopper and have a whole lot of carry back which is obviously inefficient. He waits for a second for uh, for the crusher to do its job, and then this would uh, run up to our scalping screen on what we called the, the 42 belt, or sometimes if we were feeling snarky, we'd call it the 24 belt because it had so many tails cut off of it. It was uh, not as it was not 42 inches wide anymore. Uh, that's the 24 belt off the right. You can see the Teledyne Horan rock breaker that we used to break up larger material, oversized slabs that sometimes would get sent up. So there's that flapper door there, and if we had contract for riprap at the at the time, we would send it down the riprap chute, all that oversize, and you know, sell it for uh, projects on the river, or, or uh, erosion prevention, retaining walls, whatever they need to riprap for. So that's a whole bunch of riprap down there, and if we did not have contract for it, we'd flip that that diverter door over and send that rock to this, which is our Nordberg standard crusher. This cone crusher, I think it's a 1973 thing that is older than I am, and it broke down a total of about twice in a in a one year period. It, it was a phenomenal crusher. That that thing just would not stop. Now the the undersize from the, uh, the scalping screen would go up, we called a uh, number 16 belt, to this, which is our DGA stockpile or dense grade aggregate. It's just a real fine road base material packed real well. If you mixed it with water in a pug mill, you get a pug product, which was almost like concrete once it dries out. Just really good, all purpose uh, road base material. And this is a ground level view of the the primary side of the plant, scalping screens up in that structure, DGA belts off that way. And uh, off to the right is our, we call it our surge stacker. That's where we'd send the, uh, the discharge from two crushers. So there was that Nordberg standard and also a uh, Pioneer horizontal shaft impact crusher that didn't get video of. Uh, feeds the surge pile so we can run the primary, even if the, the secondary or finish side, which you can see right there, is down. Uh, and to draw that surge pile down, we used a vibratory feeder located in this surge tunnel. So this surge tunnel is uh, pretty, I liked the spot. It, uh, especially in the winter, it stayed nice and warm. In the summer, it stayed nice and cool because you'd have, you know, 25,000 tons of rock on top of you. There was a, a lot of mass there. Could, uh, go down there do some cleanup shoveling, check the splices, uh, check for, for leaks, make sure we didn't have any liners get displaced or 
uh, water buildup. Like there was a submersible pump down there that we plug in if, uh, if we got a rainstorm because you know, you'd have uh, knee deep water in the base of the tunnel right there. Uh, we kind of ran it like a, like an underground mine. So this down here is our escapeway tunnel. It was kind of a, a crawl on your hands and knees type deal, but I could do it just fine. And uh, that led out to the, the other portal. So this is the finished side, kind of where that uh, surge belt discharges to. And that blue structure, we have three screens in there. We call it our dry house. Let's look at the wet process side of things, which we'll get to in a bit. This is inside the dry house. We have these three screens, and they were running closed circuit with uh, uh, Mezzo HP 400 cone and uh, Nordberg shorthead. And the 400 cone it had some electrical or controls or sensors, sensor issues, and the thing would shut off for no apparent reason without throwing the code. I wasn't really a big fan of it. Uh, that is the, the 400 right there, and the belt feeder actually on the uh, both of those crushers, we had a belt feeder. So I'm standing right next to the, the Nordberg standard. This was a good crusher, but we could, we could uh, clog it occasionally with the malfunction. That was about a, full, about a three or four hour job to dig it out. The undersize from all the screens in the dry house comes out here to a 10 or 11 belt. And that runs out to a it's an Eagle Ironworks double sand screw, which we'll see in just a second. Uh, that sand screw, it's just a spiral classifier, so we pull off the, uh, like the 200 mesh floaty stuff and send it out to our tailings impoundment, which was just a mined out surface pit from the, oh, the 60s. This plant was built in uh, 67, 68. And that's looking at the, the surge pile, panning over. There's uh, Chucky on the skid steer. He and I kind of fought over that thing. Uh, then. Here's all of the, uh, the finish side. Those bins used to be able to load dump trucks overhead, but uh, that system is no longer functional and it would limit our throughput uh, based on customer demand. So we actually uh, use a bin truck and run, uh, use the bin truck to stockpile and the loaders to bucket up. So this is where the uh, product from those two cones on the finish side go. It's called our wash plant. It's a, like a 20, maybe a 2013 Conwell wash screen. And we produce uh, number 57 and number, and number 8 WCA, uh, like washed crushed aggregate off of there. So this was uh, for you know, asphalt, concrete, just real expensive, $30 a ton, good stuff. I'm looking, uh, sitting, standing on the deck of the wash plant. You can see that screen go into town and all that rock. The, the upper deck there is sacrificial. It just protects the, uh, the bottom two decks. So the, the overs from the, the bottom, or the, the middle and bottom deck go to the number 57, which is the 5 8 product. And the unders from the bottom deck go to the number 8, which is a 3 8 product. Uh, so this is, that's all there is to this plant. Uh, there's uh, a lot of other stuff, but this is kind of a good survey view. Down into the, the 57 bin there. I dropped my phone down there once. Looking uh, across Brooks Run from the wash plant, uh, a couple deer in the woods there. We'd, we'd have deer, raccoons, etc. show up, find tracks, if, uh, find tracks the next morning in the plant. But, uh, that's it, guys. It's been 4011.19 with Ed Frame Miners. Thank you very much for watching.